bars were a huge thing for a while. Now it's Salad Works. People still go to Salad Works. We don't really have one in the area, but I love Salad Works. In fact, my niece works at Salad Works. I told her, do you know what the original garden salad is? Because they changed it. And she's like, no. I'm like, well, um, somebody's going to have to tell you because when I come in, I want an original garden salad. They put all kinds of stuff in salad, now pasta and all, all kinds of stuff to make it unhealthy, right? So look out for a Wawa near you that may be serving up some burgers. You know, I should dig into that little a little bit. Find out if they are actually putting a grill in. So we'll see. Um, just got a text from my man. I didn't see it until now because I went straight into the podcast because I got things to do today. I got things to do. That's right. I got a coffee date at 9 o'clock, and I'm trying, trying to get to the gym. Go to the gym, and I'd like to come home and shower because we went to Walmart yesterday, and that is where I like to get most of my makeup because it's cheap there, right? And I needed to get some new makeup, so I did get some new makeup, and I would like to test it out. See how fabulous I look in my new makeup. So on to today's topic is a story that I posted about an American Airlines passenger causing a major debate after reclining her seat. Now, there is a video posted on the in the story on the Hopeless page if you would like to go to see the actions of the man sitting behind a woman that chose to recline her seat. Again, a seat reclines. I I simply feel it's your option to recline it. Now, I dug into this story a little bit more, and apparently the way that it went down is she reclined her seat back. She says she has chronic back pain. She wasn't asking for special treatment when it came to trying to limit her chronic back pain. She was merely exercising the right that she has available to her, which is to recline her seat. Apparently the man had asked her to put her seat back up while he ate. He said, you know, I'm I'm trying to eat here. Do you mind putting your seat back up? And she said, oh, yeah, no problem. So she put her seat back up. When she noticed that he finished eating, she put the seat back down. She reclined again. He was unhappy. He apparently started punching her seat, the back of her seat, so hard. She said it was several times she flew forward. And she said it hurt. And then she called a flight attendant over who gave her a reprimand. Gave her a reprimand. And then she said she could hear the flight attendant sympathizing with the man saying, yeah, I know, it's very tight back here. And at one point, I even heard that she gave the man a free drink, like an alcoholic beverage to try and calm calm him, I guess. I don't know. Um, So now, not only are we not discouraging bad behavior, we're rewarding it. (laughs) I just shake my head. I just shake my head. Um, So if you check out this video, she started recording him at a certain point where he just continuously knocked on the back of her chair. Now, I think that there was a time where I would have just, you know, held my ground like this woman did and put up with that behavior. But I am at a point in my life now where I realize, does that make me the winner? Does that make me the winner? Getting my seat knocked into for the entire flight. No. It doesn't. Clearly, you're dealing with somebody who has the mentality of a child. You can't win when you're arguing with a child. So, I don't know. I just can't believe that this has gotten to this to this point. Now, we all know that the area that you get in a flight it, on an airplane has gotten smaller and smaller over the years. That is part of the problem. Now, if you would like a lot of room, feel free 
to purchase a first class ticket. A lot more room up there. But I just don't understand why he feels he's more entitled to comfort than she is. I mean, granted, I don't think he was, I think he was in the last aisle. So I don't think he had the option of reclining his seat. I've also heard that those seats are cheaper. Whether that's true or not, I don't really know. But uh, I didn't get a lot of response on this. I guess people didn't feel like debating on a Sunday, and that's fine. But um, the people who did kind of um, went into it a little bit. So I'm going to read their responses. Marcy, Marcy says, this is so dumb. Yes, a person should be able to recline their seat. If it's a problem for the person behind them, that person should politely ask for the seat to be raised. I can't understand why people feel the need to be passive aggressive in these situations. And like I pointed out, he did ask her to put it up and she did until he was done eating she said just politely speak to the other person we're all adults here lynn says uh lots of thoughts on this one the chairs reclined for a reason right why would you allow this man to continue to punch your chair and then complain about still being in pain you could have moved your chair back upright he's still a jerk but you're not in pain and dude seriously how did the chair being back affect you from watching a video on your phone grow up people and that's kind of what i was saying is I don't think I would have dealt with that nonsense for the entire flight. I would have let him think he won and put my seat back up. It's just not worth it anymore, people. Fine. He's going to go through the rest of his life telling this story how he won. Good on him. You got to relax the rest of your flight instead of getting your seat punched. Kathy says, I usually don't recline my seat. And I, I, I'm hearing that the newer planes don't have the option. But Kathy says, I don't usually recline my seat unless the person behind me is in is a pain in the neck and they're kicking and banging my seat. And if the person in front of me reclines, then I just put the food tray up and down a few times to annoy them. I believe the newer planes, you cannot recline. Okay, that's where I read that. But let's face it, you are on a plane for a number of hours. It's cramped, close quarters. You need to grin and bear it, even if you are uncomfortable because it isn't permanent. It will be over as soon as the plane lands. The trouble with people nowadays is they have no patience, and it's all about them, and they don't give a crap about anyone else. Right. A lot of politeness has gone out the window in the past few years. It really is a shame. It wasn't like that 40 years ago when my husband and I used to travel all over the place. I know they make the plane seating arrangements small now and very cramped than when I used to travel years ago, but like I said, it's only a a plane ride. It will be over before you know it. I don't know. The biggest issue I have with this is the flight attendant's response. Again, not only are we not correcting bad behavior now, but we're rewarding it by showing compassion and sympathy and a free drink. The man acted like a child. I don't know. He asked her to put her seat up. While she while he ate, maybe he didn't say, you know, while I'll eat, but she pointed that part out of the story. So even if he said, do you mind putting your seat up? She was kind enough to do it while he was eating. It is her choice. And if she doesn't want to keep her seat in the upright position, if it has the option to recline, that is her choice. Who does he think he is? I don't know. It makes me crazy. It just makes me crazy. So I'm going to move on. To the blog post, to today's blog post, which is a very nervous looking picture of me. So be cool, man. Just keep you cool. Same thing to that guy on the flight, I think. But do you ever find yourself in a situation where you are already extremely nervous and that makes you more of a mess than you usually are? Let me explain. I had a call with my friend who helped me start this podcast, Matthew. I've I hadn't talked to him in a while because he kind of yelled at me for not knowing some of the tech basics, which, you know, made it hard for me to communicate with him. I kind of messed Skype all up. Like, I just didn't have it set up right, and he got kind of mad. I can be sensitive. I took his scolding kind of hard. I haven't been in touch with him since June. I think it's around June. I was saving my Get Some Help free card for when I really needed it. And this is when I really needed it. So as you know, I've been struggling with the Mac and the adjustment. So um, I knew even going over to my friend Cheryl's house tomorrow that she wouldn't be familiar with the app I use to record my podcast. So I reached out to Matthew for some help. Um, 
just over, you know, email. He said he would be glad to help and uh, set up a Skype call for later in the week. Okay, here we go again with the Skype. I, I'm not a Skype user. Never used Skype before, Matthew. I haven't used it since. Um, so I went over the basics, uh, basics, made sure everything was installed, set up properly before the call started. So I sit down to eat some breakfast 20 minutes before the call to find an email from him saying he was ready if I was. Now, in my haste to take up as little time as possible, I jumped on Skype and dialed in without hesitation. I should have given myself a few minutes to make sure everything was uh, just right because now I'm rushing and nothing usually good comes from that, especially when you're already nervous. So I got connected on the call. I can see him, figure out how to get him to see me, and he starts directing me on how to share my screen with him. I accidentally end the call. And then guess what happened? I had hit an update later in an earlier session on my laptop, and yeah, decided now the time it's going to do it. Yep, worst case scenario. I see that it will take 29 minutes. 29 minutes. Are you freaking kidding me? It's like the absolute worst has happened. I was hoping it wouldn't take that long since they seem to overshoot these estimations, but it did take a long time. I don't know if it was 29 minutes, but it was a long time. Sent him an email saying the computer was updating, and if I can't get back to him by the appointed time, then not to worry about it. He said no worries. He was going to be on a conference call but could get away when I was ready. Okay, whew. But I'm still sweating it. I mean seriously sweating at it, staring at the screen, yelling at it. I'm giving it dirty looks. I'm asking it why. Why are you taking so long? Then I realize that I am causing myself so much stress. Whatever happens at this point is already happening. I literally said to myself, be cool, McClure. Just be cool. So I finally got the computer up and running, called him back, had a couple more issues. I sensed him getting a little impatient with me at one point, but he reeled himself in. I could tell he was starting to get impatient. He's like, okay, all right, all right. Kept us cool. He ended up answering all of my questions and really set me up. He was an enormous help. I was very grateful. But after the whole ordeal was over, I realized I probably made things a whole lot worse because I was so afraid I wasn't going to get things right. I ultimately made things even more of a mess because I was so freaked out. If I would have just kept my cool, it probably would have gone much smoother. Another thing is this. I didn't ask for the Skype call. He offered to do that. He knows I'm not tech inclined. I had admitted I needed help because I can't figure out my new computer. He was aware of all of this. So he kind of knew what he was getting himself into. And yet I still made it so much harder than it had to be. So when you're in a situation where you are nervous or really worried you are going to screw up, be cool. Seriously, keep your cool. In fact, This is the best thing I could have done, and this is my advice to you. It takes a little time, but usually it's so much worth it in the end. What I should have done is to figure out the worst-case scenario and prepare for possible disaster. That way, I could have figured out some of the issues beforehand. Now, the only issue I really couldn't do is I didn't want to place the call beforehand because, you know, there's only so much you can do off the call. Uh, But it usually demonstrates as well that we think things will be so much worse than they actually turn out to be. So it may seem silly to do that little exercise beforehand, but it will calm you. Like if I would have thought about some of the potential things that could go wrong, I don't know if I would have come up with hitting the wrong button and ending the call and then making it, you know, almost a half hour later before I could reconnect. But maybe if I had watched a YouTube video on how to share a screen on Skype, I would have been more prepared. And doesn't that make the little bit of extra time it takes worth it? So it is Monday. It is my favorite day of the week after Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, a brand new week full of opportunities and possibilities. Now I would like you to go kick some Monday ass. Oh, there we go. There we go. I thought my... I thought my little thing wasn't working, but it is. So go kick some Monday ass and go make today your best day yet. Thank you for listening to The Hopeless, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist. Oh, and have me on your show.